Okay. So we will start now with the conference that will be bring uh, to us Dr. Uh, Luis Devoni again. Of course, I will repeat some words that I expressed about Dr. Devoni uh, that I expressed yesterday. But of course, uh, the audience is new. We have new participants, and it is important to know something about the, um, the scientific life of Dr. Luis Devoni. Okay, do Dr. Devoni, start again. Uh, I can start normally. Yes, please, please <laughs> go on. Okay. Dr. Luis Devoni was born in 1919, uh, 1979 in Flores da Cunha City, in Brazil. He received his master's degree in engineering in 2008 at the former Faculty of Chemistry of the Pontificial Catholic University of Rio Grande do Sul. He understood his PhD in engineering and material science in the group of Professor Newton at the same university in 2013. Some part of his PhD was made in Coimbra, where I met him. Dr. Luis de Boni is a former professor. Sorry, see him. It was my pleasure to meet you. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you, my dear friends. Because about this relation in chemists as professionals, we are friends too. Dr. Luis de Boni is a former professor of chemistry and he currently works in the state water company from Rio Grande do Sul. He is the editor in chief, the actual editor in chief of the Southern Brazilian Journal of Chemistry and the former editor of the uh, periodico Che Chimica. Today, Dr. De Boni will uh, share with us some information about the interesting, one interesting theme, which is the uh, threatening, the threatening chemical residues with POAS, case of the study. And now, yesterday we have a lot of things, we have, uh, we, we discussed a lot about the uh, global warming, about the pollutants, about, about the problematic of the, our world, okay? But in this moment, we will learn about a bit about electrochemistry. Dr. Devoni, the audience is yours and you can just, uh, we can enjoy you. Thank you very much. Uh, warm welcome to everybody. Uh, good morning from Brazil. And I will start sharing. And by the way, if you listen to any background noises, excuse me, my daughter is here and you know how kids are. So, let me prepare to share my screen. Good. Just one second. Perfect. Can you all see it? Perfect. I can see better. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, POAs, I believe I didn't translate it, but it is Advanced Oxidative Process. Uh, you oxidize compounds to make the, it possible to separate it from the, from the main water residue. And this is a case study from a company that I worked a few years ago. It was a pleasure to work there and we didn't share uh, images from the company because I didn't got the proper approval. So I am sorry about this part, but uh, we can have a good idea of what it is during the presentation. This is more or less the summary of the conference. And what we are going to talk about is the standard practice for liquid penetrating test. This is ASTM A1417. Okay. What happens when we receive a component or a part? This part uh, by naked eye inspection looks perfect. And you cannot say if it has cracks or not. And it can become a mechanical problem that may lead, lead to the fail of the whole component, the whole part. In our case, we used to work in a, we used to manufacture valves for oil industry and uh, to work with oxygen. And, you know, it's better that these components don't, don't fail. One of the 
very good ways to make uh, set uh, to analyze the components is the liquid penetrating test. How it works? You will have the part, the component. You will clean it. Then you will apply the product. There are several suppliers for the the color product. You will clean the excess and you will apply a developer. The, in the end, the part will look like this with uh, pink lines and, and a kind of a white powder. And with that, you can not only see that uh, you, ha you have cracks that wasn't, weren't visible in the naked eye inspection, but you can also see the dip of the cracks and the extension 